Thank you, Fiona, for joining us today. And uh, I'd just like to start by talking about your personal approach to your projects, uh, in particular the social-political context of your most recent work, Beyond the Wall. And I'm wondering, what personal circumstances do you feel draw you to work on more significant political and social subjects? I think um, I've always had a sort of social consciousness I, I, from a very, very young age. And um, I remember around the age of 10 seeing the film, the documentary on Biafra and being, I, I think for the first time ever, understanding that there were people in the world that didn't live exactly like I did. And I, I think from almost that moment, um, there's a sense of, of being very aware of how other people live and different circumstances of people's lives and, that, and also maybe a sense of my own guilt um, at, my, at a kind of how fortunate I am. So I think that, kind, that look on life has always been with me. Um, I don't think it's something that's just sort of developed in the recent years. But probably more recently, um, I've been more focused on actually expressing it. And although your, your personal work generally has, has a social perspective, and I, and I am referring to your quite intimate work with your daughter, you do with your daughter photographically, um, I wouldn't actually describe you as a documentary photographer. So I'm, I'm wondering, where, where do you place yourself in that context? Somewhere between um, intimate photography and social documentary. And I guess, I don't know if the term's right, but it's like called concerned photography. It's people who photograph um, through their own experience and their own lives uh, things around them that have a social context. And um, referring to your project Beyond the Wall, um, the work was started before and indeed continues now after the most recent conflict between Israel and Palestine last year in 2009. And, and I'm wondering, has, has your approach differed from before um, to after the conflict, the recent conflict? I don't think my approach to the actual photography has changed. I mean, uh, it, the style of photography was quite set. It's very straight and, and um, observational. And each photograph, the photographs that I took before and after have the same look. You wouldn't know that they were photographed, you know, that there had been a war in the middle of it. But I think my attitude or my feeling um, is more despondent. I felt very, very upset by the war. And, and maybe I also felt that the work became a bit worthless. Um, I think that's probably the ma major change. And you do write in, um, about your sense of hopelessness, hopelessness about the situation. Uh, however, I, I personally feel that there's, there's a feeling that you're doing something in terms of its resolution. And I'm just wondering, you, you are raising awareness of pretty significant issues, clearly. Uh, is there a sense of this as being an attempt to find a solution for yourself? Or, or is it a sense of uh, making the situation more aware for others to come contemplate? Um, uh, maybe both. I mean, I think predominantly the work is really very personal. I, I decided to make it because I felt I wanted to say something rather than nothing. But I also don't truly believe that photography can change anything. So, I'd, I, although I'd like to imagine that there was um, a way of raising awareness and starting a debate around subjects that are very difficult, I also feel it's a bit naive. So I, I went out, I set out to make the work really as a response to not be compliant with, in a situation. Like to say, I want to say something rather than just ignore it. Really, that's, that was my um, immediate, it was very much for myself. The situation in the Middle East, or particularly between Palestine and Israel, is very complicated, very complicated. And the more I involve myself in the project, the more I read, the more I saw, the more film I watched, the more theatre I went to, the more I understood that the, the, its complexity. And actually um, almost left me with a sense of, um, I, where do you begin? You know, it, it, it's so complicated and so enmeshed. So rather than um, enter into the dialogue of, um, solutions, who's to blame, um, 
the, this kind of duality of which I felt there was already a lot of literature and information about. I really just wanted to make a very personal statement about my own response, um, and it's and it's very um, it's almost it's it's, a, it's almost like a tiny grain of sand in a big beach. Um, it's like my word amongst all the other words, and and it was about my it was a response to my own sense of helplessness, and and almost a response to um, that actually beyond all that complexity. We are really simply human beings, and and um, it, it was work that was trying not to blame, um, not to say who is a persecutor and who's a victim, because there is already so much of that there, and that's just some sort of ping pong that goes on endlessly um, about who's okay and who's not okay. It was almost, uh, in a way, a more psychological statement I wanted to make rather than a social statement. Well, the project is a visualisation and recognition of what you discuss in your paper as your subject's view of the other, in inverted commas. Um, how do you personally relate to these two different groups as you work? Um, well, I, I, I didn't relate to people according to Palestinians and Israelis. I mean, there was, um, there was certain technicalities about finding Palestinian men that would be willing to be photographed and finding Israeli men that would be willing to be photographed and um, uh, but when I actually photographed someone um, it was irrelevant to me what was much more significant was the fact that they were men and that I was a woman and I think that if anything the other for me is the man so I set up facing the other myself by photographing a man that's very interesting and um, my next question pertains to the fact that obviously you, they are portraits of men and I just wondered what part of the woman behind these men do you think play in, in the dynamics? Do they play any any part at all? And, and as you photograph these men, is there a sense of the woman behind the man? I really, it's, it's a huge question, is there a... a who are the women behind the men? I, I just wouldn't know what the answer is. But one of the things I experienced, um, which somewhere touches on that for me, is that when I photographed these men, they became very feminine. And this is a very m male dominated macho culture. And some of these men had to stand in front of a woman telling them what to do. I mean, to the point that they had only agreed for me to photograph them because a man had asked them. I went with a man. The man asked them to, for me to do the pictures. They couldn't say no to the man, so they allowed me to do it. But when I did it, I took them away from the group or wherever they were, and I sort of took them round the back, as it were, and, and photographed them against the wall. But I was in complete control. so and I was telling them what to do. So in fact, what happened was there was a sort of shift where they became quite passive and I became quite active. And my sense looking at the images is that they are, they have become very feminine men. So I don't know if that answers the question about where's the woman, but I'd say the woman is inside them. Yeah, that's, that's very, very interesting. And my next question is effectively, um, how do you feel when you when you effectively sandwich your subject between the camera and the wall, and um, how does that sense of control and that's that's my my presumption, but how does that sense of control come come out in the final portrait of the man? I do feel I had a sense of control. That's probably an accurate word, and I think that in the final portrait, what appears to me is that the men are very vulnerable. And that quality of vulnerability was quite intentional. I was aware when I set up the images that I wanted to have men that I didn't know, that it was literally, I'm coming in, I'm shooting, I'm leaving. I didn't try to build up a relationship or know them in any intimacy or um, chat about their circumstances, like I might if I was going to do a portrait. It